Often, we strive to find the way to create fun, amazing, happy, and enjoyable D&D games. But, what if that's not your style? What if you set out to create the worst D&D game possible? You set out to put your players upon a sea of misery by which they will never escape. Well, if that is your goal, then this is the video for you. Today, I will go over eight ways to make your D&D game the absolute worst experience possible. I couldn't possibly cover every method of doing this, as being miserable is far easier than being happy. However, I think I have assembled a comprehensive guide for both DMs and players to absolutely maximize misery in Dungeons and Dragons. Without further ado, let's get started. This first set of four tips will go to you DMs out there for which making miserable D&D games is easy. It's easy to do anything when you have all the power, especially making other people miserable. And the first tip is quite simple. It's just don't care. Don't bother to help new players understand the game. Don't bother to help invest experienced players in your world. Don't bother to prep your games or to be enthusiastic during sessions or to help your players create interesting character backstories that fit into the world. Don't get excited when your players are excited because, well, those things cause fun and we don't want any of that around here. When the person running the game isn't enthusiastic, isn't invested, no one is going to be invested at all. Have little investment in your world and your story and it will cause your players to lose 90% of the experience. Believing the world and being invested in it is a big part of D&D. So make sure that that joy is not theirs and you will ensure misery. Now, that's going to be pulling a lot of work in this situation, but it's not all of the work. Now, I said that you shouldn't care about the game, but if you want to maximize misery, truly maximize it, that's not entirely true. You need to care about killing your players. You need to be invested in being their enemy. Now, I don't just mean playing the bad guys. Every DM does that. You always are playing the monsters. But I mean you, you the DM, should be the player's enemy. Create encounters specifically to screw them over. Always make up rules so that all of their ideas don't work out. Make sure the players feel like they're always going uphill and nothing ever works in their favor. A big part of D&D is solving problems, so make all your problems increasingly unsolvable. It will frustrate your players, vex them to no end, and it will be glorious. Another thing you should care about is yourself. Your story is what matters most, not the players. I mean, I know that everyone calls D&D a collaborative storytelling experience, and a big part of the fun of Dungeons & Dragons is working with the entire group to create a story together. So naturally, if you're trying to make a miserable D&D group, don't do that. Be selfish. Ensure that the players feel like they have no part in the story. Railroad them. Make sure that their choices don't matter because, quite frankly, if they feel like there's no point to playing the game, then, well, it won't be a very fun game and the goal of maximum misery has been achieved. Now, I'm not talking about making a linear adventure. Plenty of great DMs do that. We're not trying to be great DMs. We're trying to be crappy DMs. It's not necessarily a linear story. It's the feeling that their choices don't matter, that ultimately nothing the players do will change the situation that they are in. It is all decided by the DM. There are no boons. There are no consequences for player action. Everything is predetermined. Make sure that they feel feel that glorious, ever so glorious railroad, and they will no longer be invested in your story, your game, or the fun of it. Finally, and this is very crucial because maximizing misery sometimes 
needs to be done with a little bit of help. And if you do not stop a problem player at your table, then that help will be granted to you. Problem players can very quickly ruin D&D games, especially when the group doesn't have backup from the DM. Unfortunately, or fortunately, we DMs take up the leadership role at the table. It's part of the social contract, and we are a part of the group, a big part of it. So, when we don't weigh in on issues, it is definitely felt. If we let a problem player run rampant, then they can do all the work in making a miserable D&D game for us. We don't even need to do any of those previous points. It is automated misery. Beyond the brainless monkeys of the earth, we have ascended to greater heights. It is glorious, is it not? Okay, now, time to see how you can ruin a D&D game as a player. It is more difficult. You don't have all the power here. You're not the DM anymore. You're just a player among other players. But you can still absolutely ruin the experience. This is all predicated on the fact that your DM is enabling you. That needs to happen. If your DM isn't enabling you, it's going to be really hard to ruin a D&D game as a player. So, assuming that we have a DM who's allowing us to do all of this, let us continue. First and foremost, try to make yourself the center of attention at all times. And I mean at all times. Hog the spotlight to a degree that is absurd. Make a character that is specifically made to be a main character with a ridiculous backstory and crazy amounts of magical items and crazy superpowers to make your character the center of attention at all times. D&D is a cooperative experience. In theory, characters should come in and out of the spotlight depending on the story or share the spotlight together. But if you really want to maximize misery, take that spotlight for yourself. There's nothing more miserable than watching someone else have all the fun. And if you steal the fun from everyone, then everyone's going to be miserable. Goal achieved. The second tip is quite simple. Cheat. That's it. It's quite simple. You're not the DM, but if you lie your way into dice rolls, then that means you can be just as much of a problem as a bad DM who fudges their rolls to screw over players. If you fudge your rolls to make yourself more powerful and to hog the spotlight more, that maximizes player misery, just like we talked about in the previous point. Utilizing the power of cheating can make the other players feel like they can't stand up to their own party member. Nothing will make someone more insignificant feeling than that, especially if it feels illegitimate. It's just brilliant. Now here's a role-playing tip. Be the lone wolf. Now, we talked about spotlight hogging before, and being a lone wolf and the spotlight hog at the same time is a combination that is so beautiful that I do not think my eyes could behold such a thing without going blind from the pure perfection of it all. Being a lone wolf while also being a spotlight hog allows you to steal the spotlight from other players while not allowing them to even share in it with you. If you're a lone wolf interacting with NPCs without the party, going against party agency, going against their alignment and killing random guards, doing all that great stuff, then not only are you stealing the spotlight from them, but you're keeping them from even sharing in it with you. It is a brilliant, beautiful, artful way to maximize player misery. And as long as the DM allows it to happen, you will have all the power in this game. Okay, final point, and final point for a reason, because this is both something that players can do and DMs can do. Ignore player boundaries. Boundaries make people feel safe while playing Dungeons & Dragons. And for a lot of us, I would say all of us, that's really important. Feeling safe during our leisure time and during something we do for fun is really important. Respecting boundaries is a huge part of that. So naturally, don't do that. 
don't respect boundaries, don't use safety tools, don't bother to care about what other people are feeling. This is D&D, &D. it's all fantasy, it doesn't matter. Make sure to invalidate the things that they feel and you will absolutely maximize not only their misery in game, but their misery out of game. Not only will you possibly set them off from the campaign, but you might set them off of D&D &D as a whole. You might drive them away from the whole game. I mean that, that right there is the ultimate symbol of a problem player. Not only driving someone away from a campaign, but from D&D &D as a whole, the entire hobby. I mean, you have achieved ultimate infliction of misery. Well done. With these eight steps combined, you are on your way, my young friends. You are now equipped to drive your party into the sea of sadness by which they will never escape. So, good luck out there. Okay, time to drop the act. Obviously, this is a satirical video. Don't take any of these things seriously. I am making a little bit of fun out of the problem players that we often talk about on this channel, but if you see some of yourself in this video, do not panic. I know I was playing a ridiculous caricature, but that doesn't mean that that is you. If you see some of your habits in this video, take this as a wake up call. Improvement starts by realizing that there's a problem in the first place. So observe your own DMing style and see where the problem lies and then work to improve it. Improvement is the mark of the best DMs. If you guys enjoyed this episode of Tabletop Tavern Tips, then please do leave a like. If you want to see more content from me, I promise it's not all this satirical, then please do subscribe to Crispy's Tavern. And finally, if you want to leave your own thoughts, go down to the comments down below. In essence, like, comment, subscribe. I will see you all next time. Farewell.